So, what piece of unadulterated crap are we showing tonight? Well, Mr. Negative, I'll have you know that the movie we're showing tonight has achieved bona fide cult status, and it's not just the Blue Oyster cult on the soundtrack. I thought you said we were going to watch cartoons. Oh, but we are, Grot, we are. But it's not just your run of the mill everyday cartoon. Oh, no! It's heavy metal! Oh, heavy metal? Oh, Lord. This isn't the one with the glowing green ball and all the freaky zomboys and undressed women, is it? Why, yes. Yes, it is. Heavy Metal is a series of loosely linked stories based on the, the nature of evil, and it uh, features the vocal talents of John Candy, Harold Ramis, and John Vernon, among others. For years, copyright problems kept this sucker out of circulation, but for now, sit back and enjoy the ride. It's a freaky one. I like cartoons. Bugs Bunny, Mickey Mouse, Marmaduke. Boy, you in for a shock. <laughs> We will return to Heavy Metal. Is it just me, or uh, do all the women in this movie have freakishly big breasts? No, oh, they're not bad. They're just drawn that way. Hey, Glad, it's called knowing your audience, okay? Like uh, the uh, geeky guy who turns into the big super big stud. Happens all the time. Sure, sure. This is not like any other cartoons I've ever seen. No, no it isn't. That's because uh, Heavy Metal was actually made uh, by separate different animators working independently and then assembled in post-production by the director. And yet they all love the big boobies. Yes. Coming up next, a B-17 bombing run goes horribly awry and a segment called So Beautiful and So Dangerous where John Candy plays a sex-crazed robot. Oh. Typical. By all means, let's set the cause of artificial intelligence back 20 years. Huh. Let's hope that chick on the dock kicks some major ass. I'm really bored. Ah, uh, yes. Well, uh, this uh, segment of heavy metal, The Legend of Tarna, is the longest at 27 minutes. And boy, it sure does feel that way, doesn't it? Uh, it's also the one with the bondage theme, so those of you who swing that way might want to stay tuned. There sure is a lot of sex in this movie. Yeah? You're yeah, having a lot of trouble with that, aren't you? Mm. Well, I'm thinking maybe I should watch some of the newer, gentler cartoons. Let me guess. Ooh, I don't know which one would be. Mm, let me think. Mm, uh, South Park? It's about four young kids in the bucolic Colorado town. Sounds more my speed. Are you going to tell them? <laughs> Not a chance. Anyway, uh, coming up after the movie, we will uh, tell you how to see even more heavy metal. For now, back to the ass-kicking warrior bed. I don't get it. Get what? The ending there. The little green ball terrorizes the girl for what? An hour, tells her all these weird stories, threatens to kill her, and then she winds up turning into the warrior babe for no good reason. Why didn't you just finish him off in the first place? Well, that would have made for a pretty short movie now, wouldn't it? Anyway, Heavy Metal was made for only nine million Canadian dollars, and it's grossed many more times that. In fact, it's still one of the most successful Canadian films in history. Fueled by years when it was impossible to get. They had pirated versions sort of floating around on video. All because they didn't clear the music rights. Anyway, that was settled a couple of years ago. You can now get it legally, complete with an all-new three-minute segment uh, called Neverwhere that's only available on video. Well, isn't that great? You forget to clear the music rights. Huh, that producer must be a real idiot. Well, heavy metal producer uh, Ivan Reitman went on to become one of Hollywood's top comic uh, heavyweights, directing Ghostbusters and Stripes and making a lot, a lot of money. You love doing that, don't you? You know, it doesn't suck. 